Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique house. It's your boy, ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? None, none. You know, my day all gone. Man, hey, man, listen, man. I came down here to meet this guy right here, to be honest with you. We down here in Houston, Texas. Uh, this guy right here, man, he was in a, a, a movie that premiered last night, one of them leading roles. And I wanted to come down and meet him before this even happened, but it didn't happen. But God made a way. How they say? God did. Look, I'm here now. Check it, man. Propane's in the building. Man, what a dude. Happy to be man, here. That a dope I'm intro uh, you ever heard in your damn life. Boy, <laughs> that nigga, like, you thought I was Steve Harvey the way I brought that boy in there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining the show, man. man I'm glad to be here. Say, here. man, you one of the guys, man, that, hey, man, <clears throat> when I seen you uh, <clears throat> in that movie last night, mm. that was your first film? Yeah, my first movie. That's that, that's good, man. Because you bro. was convincing as hell. Thank you, bro. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, you convinced like crazy last yeah. night. Yeah, you. I believe you. You that nigga. You was a rhyming nigga. <laughs> I ain't gonna say no more. Cause I can't get a movie. Away. Yeah, that's why but when I saw him, I didn't really like him. Yeah. Because of that movie. My mom. I, I took my mom with me, and uh, after the movie, she was just like, I don't even know that side, <laughs> man. Who is you? You know what I'm saying? And it was. That was dope, man. That was a super dope experience. Uh, I mean, as we was walking out the theater, I was getting side eyed by a lot of people. Like, you know, what I'm that was that was dope. That's hard, man. Yeah. That just so, showed you did a good job. Yeah, man, appreciate it. Thank and you. it show how talented you are because when people can play a role that's not normally them, that right. show your acting skills. You know. Definitely, and not definitely. Uh, because I watch people like Taraji, mm -hmm. and when I see her play a lot of different roles, and the majority of her roles are similar. Different. I'm like, nah, she like that in real person. There's no way you can't be like that in real person if you keep playing a certain type yeah. of role. Yeah. But if you can switch it up and play different type of roles, mm -hmm. you're like, uh, uh, you just talented. Thank you, thank you, thank you, man. I, I studied. Uh, so you did I acting. <laughs> no, I didn't at all. But uh, so I've always wanted to do acting. But at the same time, I should, a lot of my videos, I try to like put some substance in them. So I act out a lot in my uh, in my videos. But at the same time, when I knew the role that I was going to play for this movie, mm -hmm. I studied characters like that. So I studied Rico from Payton Fool, Cameron. Okay. Even though I've seen the movie many times, I really studied just him. And then I studied T.I. from Takers. Mm -hmm. You know, so... Um, it was like all similar characters. So I just really kind of studied them a lot. And but for the most part, it was just kind of natural. I just felt like I kind of was in rapper mode, you know what I'm saying, during shooting the movie. But it was a double experience. It was something new. I'm definitely taking that super, super serious. I want to get into way more movies. Let me say this fun fact. I was at your premiere. All right. Right? Mm -hmm. It's big. I was at the Takers premiere in Vegas too, baby. It's That's always dope. up, nigga. Yeah. That's dope. <laughs> we was there, That's right? Dope. He was Pitches there. When Paul, when Paul was living and everything. Yeah. We hard, man. That's I told dope, you. <laughs> That's so, a fun fact. Go ahead. <laughs> watching um, yourself on a big screen for the first time after you've acted, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know how you don't expect, you don't know what to expect. You see it on there. Right. What did you, um, what did you expect how was the outcome? <clears throat> and if you're anything like, because you, you said you're a person that went and practiced the role. So I know you are a perfectionist somewhat Definitely. from the main fact you said that. Did you see your flaws yeah, and how you can yeah, make it yeah. better? Yeah. So <clears throat> that's like my gift and my curse. So mm -hmm. the whole movie, it was hard to enjoy. So I stayed for both showings. So the second one was a little bit easier for me that first one. I'm just watching everything like, damn, I shouldn't have did this. Man, I shouldn't have did that. If I would have did it like this, even though people were telling me like, damn, bro, you killing it. I'm still just looking at yeah. everything. I'm like, damn, I wish I could get another chance to go back and do this. Mm -hmm. And then, so you got to think, uh, when we, we was shooting a movie for a couple months. Mm -hmm. So as it started to go, I started to get better and better and more comfortable. But the very first day, which just so happens to be my first scene. I can tell like that, that was the, you know what I'm saying? The the, the stage fright a little You're bit, right. a little bit of butterflies, you know what I'm saying? Even though I thought it was cool, I knew it could have been way better. I wish it could have been like how it was through the duration of the movie, how it was in the beginning, you know what right. I'm saying? But it, it, I was pleased with all of it, man. Um, and I, the whole time we was on set, man, I was the one who people would do it, they'll go off. I'd go over there to the directors. Hey, bro, what you think? 
how you think? You think I should do it like this? Is like, nah, bro, you killing it. You doing good. I'm like, man, don't be telling me that. Don't be lying to me, bro. Right. Cause I want it to be good. You know what I'm saying? So let me know. But throughout the whole process of the movie, everybody on set was just telling me, like, damn, you shocking us. You surprising us. We not, you know what I'm saying? We didn't expect this to be like this. So I was kind of confident going into the um to the premiere. I felt like I did, I did a good job. So mm -hmm. just to see everybody rocking with it, that was that was super dope. Dirty, dirty third. What was mm -hmm. the name of yeah, it? Something else. Third, next generation. The next, next generation. generation. This movie is one that's been consecutively coming out. Yeah. Right? So, well, actually, the last one came out twenty years ago. This was a movie ago. when I was young. This was like a classic Houston movie. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This is them to like I'm about it to Louisiana. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like this yeah. shit was huge. All the rappers was in it. Slim Thug was in it. I think he was like 19, 20 years old. You know what, wow. what I'm saying? ESG, all the rappers. Scarface was in part two. Everybody was in these movies. So this is a, this is a series of that we was always fans of. If you was from this Houston culture, DJ School was in it. You know what I'm saying? So we always loved it. As a kid growing up, that's something I never in a million years thought I would have been doing a Dirty Third. But as a kid wanting to be a rapper and you want to be like these people, that was something I always wanted to do. And I always tell people that, like, I ain't, my plans wasn't to do the Dirty Third, but my plans was to do some movies. So it just so happens it come full circle. It just, that was just dope. That's live, bro. Yeah. That's live. I like sure. that, man. For you sure. know what I'm saying? Because you got to realize, man, you know, when you get to do something that you, you you never thought it could have happened, but then right. it happens, and you've been happened, knowing man. that it was big. Yeah. That's hard, man. And for it's sure. for the culture. Come on. Oh, man, that's our people, man. We we need to show that this is the history. Yo. That's why I do this, because mm. we want to leave a legacy. We want to leave something our people can look at and say, you know what? 20 years later, like you right. just said, you remember when Boss Talk such and such? Yeah, Propane was on Boss Talk. I remember that Thanks. episode. Yeah. That's what this is for, man. No, that's for what sure. it's about. For sure. So, man, thank you for giving us the opportunity even to come down here and even witness what we just saw the other right. night. Right. And I just want to say, man, you I'm did a hell of like a job in there, man. Thanks. And hey, man, that's 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 what it's all about. And Appreciate then it, man. Noah been here today. We got all we got a lot of the cast members right. right here, baby. Uh, yeah. GSO Fab was on here today. In Say, world. man, it's going down, man. I'm What's loving up? it. What's but the next? way, but the way how you the way how you talk about this acting, mm -hmm. it almost sounds like you have. Or you're gaining more of a passion for acting than maybe even 100%. for the music? No, I don't say that. I ain't going to say Hold that. Hold on, that's why I'm getting that. I ain't going to say more than the music, but I'll I tell you this. So the whole last year was a process. So I was working on my album. I was shooting this movie. And I was executive producing the soundtrack for the, uh, for the movie. Mm -hmm. And I was 100% full-time dad. So... Mm. By myself, so it was by like by yourself. By myself, all how old years. is your child? She eight. Eight. Yeah. So you're single dad. Yeah. Wow. So that was a man. It was like a whirlwind all last year. So now mm -hmm. we at a point now where everything is like coming out, everything happening. So you know everything kind of paying off. But to answer your question with the movies. I'm going to always love the music because the music is what got me there. You know what I'm saying? If it wasn't for me being a rapper, I probably wouldn't be right there. So that's always going to be my love and that's fun. But right right now, if somebody was to tell me you could do this movie right now with Denzel Washington or you could do this album with, let's say Nas, that's one of my favorite rappers of all time. I might want to go do that movie with Denzel just because like... That just was a, a an experience that, and now to see how everybody reacted to it at that mm -hmm. premiere, that's like, damn, like, damn, you can really move people out mm -hmm. this, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, and I'm still gonna love music. I want to do both, but I'm just saying right now at this moment, because I'm still riding on that high from that premiere. I would probably go do a, a big movie more than doing a big album right now. So, Man. okay, we jumped into things a little bit. Um, let's take it back. Let's take it all the way back. Where, um, okay. Now, Har Harm. Harm Claw. Claw. You yeah. messed me up. <laughs> Harm Claw. Yeah. Um, Houston, Texas. That's where you're from. All right, South Side. Okay, so what was it like growing up there? And were you raised with siblings, your mom, your dad? <clears throat> Tell us yeah. about growing up. So, um, yeah, I was, uh, I was raised, me, my mom, and my older brother. And I got a younger sister who is a year younger than me, but she was adopted by... My grandma. Okay. In like six months. And so um, it was just us. And then I ended up moving when I was like five. I moved with my aunt in Longview. That's Why? In, that's in East Texas. 
Why? I guess it's financial situation. Okay. Yeah, Say, so, nigga, wait a minute. Yeah. Hold up, nigga. You know I'm from me. You said East Texas. Oh, yeah? What, nigga? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm in the woods, for real. nigga. For real. You down in Longview? Yeah, I got ties for real, for real. So I, I stayed down there until the third grade. Then I came back with my mom, and then I actually went back the end of 11th grade. I graduated from Longview. You like Longview? it down there? I mean, I got roots down there. I mean, I'm from Houston, but I love Longview. Like, I, that's second home. Longview Lobos? Or what yeah, I'm a, I'm a Lobo. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't even yeah, know, man. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, nah. Shout out to East Texas, man. Yeah, Trill talk, sure. no pill talk, nigga. You better put that one on. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> that's hard, that's, man. That's my second home. So you, you know graduated in Longview, Texas? Yeah, yeah. Man, so so you had to go. You with you? How long did you stay down there? That year, that last year? So school? I stayed. It was a year and a half. That's crazy. Yeah, I went down there because my mama ended up going to go work for TSA, and I was getting in a bunch of goddamn trouble down here. So I went to go stay with my aunt for that last year and a half, which was dope. And I I think that probably saved my life, bro. You know what wow. I'm saying? Because like at that time, like. We was wilding, bro. We was like, we had you a whole ring of niggas stealing cars. Like, yeah. we had a real crew of niggas mm-hmm. that was on the news for stealing cars. Like, wow. heavy break-ins on the southwest side of Houston. That was us. So, we was wilding. And I think around that time, right before I went out there, we was like, I was kind of toning it down because I had moved with my best friend. I wasn't even staying with my mama. And uh, when she ended up leaving, she had just threw the idea out there. And... Shit, I was just like, man, I, it don't matter. It just, I'm just going for a semester. I thought I was just going for a semester. So I got down there for that last semester of my junior year. And we had a cold ass basketball team. You know what I'm saying? I ended up getting cool with some niggas down there, like super, super close with them. Next thing you know, I told my mom, like, I'm going to stay. For, I'm a graduate. I'm just going to stay down here for my senior year. And yeah, that, that, that was super dope, though. Wow. So I, I, I like that, man, because I, I was one that when I was young, I was in 13 years old. I was out here in Houston uh, over there. Shout out to Fat Dad and Hickey, man, over there by Smiley. Yeah, uh, yeah with the know. Smiley. Yeah, yeah, I was over there with them boys, man, yeah. off Whitfield, Lee, and all that. Yeah. You know, I used to be over there on River, Riverwood, River Trail. Well, yeah, River Trail. But mm-hmm. it, it, was, it was, I was young nigga up here at Deucin Park and all that. I never forget yeah. it. I was a young crazy nigga out here hanging out with some crazy nigga. They love to go to skate rings and yeah. fight and box yeah. all the time. So, man, you are uh, you, that song "Gangster." Uh, is that song was that's that on the soundtrack? The soundtrack. Yeah, that's that's what soundtrack. I thought. How was it making yeah. that? You Slim, who all on Me, there? Slim, Austin George, Austin George, and OTB Fastlane, and shout out to DJ XO. You made the beat. Yeah, so I always like wanted to be that dude behind the boards, and then D Rick. Shout out my boy D Rick. It was just one of the moments where he gave me the opportunity to put it together because he felt like I was one of the one of the few people in this city who can bridge the gap between the OGs and the legends and the young niggas. Like everybody rock with me. So and that was just something I wanted to do. So I was just putting together different combinations. That's hard. You know what I'm saying? And we we came out with some live ass music. So you got the zeros and the slim thugs. At the same time, you got the fast lanes and you got the OTB fast lanes. I mean, you got the DJ XOs, you got the GGO Kurtz. All of them, you know what I'm saying? All the youngsters, and we got the OGs all in the mix, you know what I'm saying? And we came up with some live ass music, yeah, for That's sure. hard, man. You know, when I first came down there, the first thing I thought about, not to jump subjects on you, but I made a few phone calls. I'm like, man, what's the temperature like down there? Uh, you know, we lost uh, takeoff down yeah. there. So when right. niggas look at Houston now, yeah, yeah, you know, sure. within the last month, it's sure. like, okay, I got to watch how I'm moving. I don't know what's going on yeah. over there, yeah. but I got to make sure I check everything out. And yeah, I'm yeah, bringing yeah. my wife down here. So yeah, I'm yeah, for sure. So, so, when I heard about that, it just messed me up. So, what were you at when this happened? Like, were you in the city or were you? Yeah, I was in the city. I actually got a phone call as soon as it happened. One of my partners was out there and he called me and told me. And I was like, nah, oh, bro, that some shit just don't even seem real. Even you know what I'm saying? And then I've I've met Takeoff a few times. Like, I shot my video for two rounds with Rich Homie Corn in Atlanta. And they was just on the come up. And they came, all, all three of them came to the video shoot. Show the nigga number love, man. They stayed the whole time at the shoot. Like, really rocked with me. So, and they, he always been a cool dude from what I knew of him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And I, I know he had a, a cool relationship with my brother, Sauce Walker. Okay. And so, around that time, when Walking them was first coming up, I, they would be around them. So, I would, you know, see them around them a lot. And, you know, every time I done seen dude, he was like player. You know what I'm saying? I think it was just an unfortunate situation. Um, rest in peace to him, man. It's a... Prayers to his family, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I think it was just an unfortunate situation. You know what I'm saying? I think that could happen anyway. I do a propane move like at night, when, right. whenever you, you're done, or if you've done a show, or if you're meeting somebody, or whatever you're doing. Right. 
Are you staying and doing different extra activities? Are you leaving? Are you just hanging, lounging? How do you move when it's in the city? I'm just asking. Right. Because, like, when you guys, man, you guys got people looking at y'all, millions of people. <clears throat> they know propane. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. you ain't no regular nigga, man. Right. Right. So, I'm just asking you, how do you, how do you avoid the situations, I guess, to say? The easy way of saying it. Like, do you be out there like that? Are you a street cat that's always out there? Nah, I mean, um, be real with me, man. Nah, Come. I'm be I'm gonna be one thousand with you. Uh, nah, I mean, if 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 I'm somewhere, I'm with I'm with the homies. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm with the homies, and we gonna we gonna move the right way. Whatever the right way is to somebody else, my right way is we gonna protect ourselves. You know what I'm saying? So, but for the most part, bro, I try to not just put myself in environments where. That got to be my main focus all the time. You know what I'm saying? And if I got to go in that type of environment, whether it be for work, business, or something like that, then I'm going to make sure I move the right way. We're going to, you know, do what we got to do, and we're going to move around. Like, I've been doing this long before I was a rapper, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? I've been out here, and I don't mean just like in the streets. I'm saying just out here living this life. Houston raised me, you know, my heart. So I've been here. You know what I'm saying? Like, Vince Young is like my brother. You know what I'm saying? Really? So, yeah, bro. So, shout like, out. And that's I, a shout out. Hell of a shout that's, out. Mm -hmm. Man, that's a Hunter Clark legend. That's a Texas legend. Yeah, that's sure. an American legend. That's, and that's one of the realest niggas I know. That's where he from. And, yeah, for sure. Yeah, he used to live with me. You know what I'm wow. saying? Wow. Yeah. So, we got to get into that. Um, that nigga that was eating all the damn chips and bread. Man, <laughs> man, big nigga, you man, know. He the big truth, quarterback man. nigga. He, he your just, age or older or younger? Uh, he older, he than, older than him. Okay. Yeah. So, but I, I just say that to say, and anybody who know who got a partner who done been on at some point, mm -hmm. like, you living life. You know what I'm saying? So long when I was broke, I ain't had no money, and I was young, my brother and, and him, them niggas was balling. So I done been doing this for a very, very right. long time. So don't none of this shit excite me. So when it's when it's really time to get to work, I'm going to do what I got to do. You know what I mean? My partners, we're going to kick and we're going to move around. Like, ain't nothing new under the sun. So I just don't put myself in them environments most of the time where, you know, a nigga got to be on his P's and Q's 24-7. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's not a good way to live. No, it's not, yeah. man. Um, you Like I said, you you a solid dude, man. When you it sure. come down to the music, man, I just want to get into how you even got in the rap. Like, right. what was what was the driving force and factor? Man, I've been rapping since, like, the fourth grade, bro. Wow, I, really? Yeah, I think it was just... I think it was just the influence of... One, what was going on in the city, like with Lil Kiki and Zero, a lot of them. But I think like the first rappers that I kind of like really, really wanted to be like was probably Bone Thugs and Harmony, then it was Master P. Oh, uh, yeah. Who's had yeah. that Bone Thugs and Harmony with? Mm. That was something that, oh, Gator Man told me that when I was interviewing. Mm. Said, you know, that's what's po what popular when he did that, mm. that song. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. So you you liked the Bone Thugs and Harmony. Yeah, then it was Master P. Then I just became a... Like I was, I was a no limit stand, bro. Really, you like Mac? I interviewed mm -hmm. Mac. All, all of them, bro. I was. I was Hell, you, you knew all them boys. I mean, you couldn't tell me I wasn't. <laughs> no, no limit, limit. For, Christmas, this old. for Christmas, my mama went to the flea market, got me the, the no limit piece, man. I had uh -huh. the no limit piece. Yeah, right no limit there, yeah. piece. Yeah, yeah, I had the no limit piece. from Cleans flea market. They couldn't tell me shit. I was, <laughs> I was no limit, bro. I was Master P. And if you weren't gonna let me be P, I was C Murder. You know what I'm saying? You weren't gonna be Silk though, because he was off beat with the rap. I know. But Silk was Silk. Silk. <laughs> no, nah, nah, bro. You didn't say Silk, See, nigga. Silk was the player, bro. And I'm, man, I'm gonna tell you something. The player, player. Tell you crazy. Things through. Probably. Tell you a crazy story, bro. So this nigga named Keno used to manage me years ago, bro. When I first first was coming in, he used to manage me. And he from New Orleans. He actually came from Abunda. KLC. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's so, my boy. You know, me and him, a, we frequently he had, a, he had a hard relationship with P and all them. So and he used to just, he, he used to tell me this, and I used to be like, all right, yeah, nigga, what up? So we in LA, we working. <laughs> he took me to LA to go. This is like when I first jumped in the game, bro. And this nigga had P come up. He pulled up and picked us up, bro. Him and Silk, swear to God, bro. Mm -hmm. We riding with P the whole day, bro. We go to 24 hours. We go hoop. We go to the mall. This nigga take me to his crib. It blew like, your mind. Man, I think the crib was in, what is it, uh, Santa Monica? Yeah. Big ass fucking crib. This nigga showed me a goddamn tax. Dang, this nigga paid like 20 million in taxes on some shit. Damn. I, bro, that was like the craziest. And I can't really That's say. A blessing. I can't really say the stories that was being told as we was riding around. The shit him and Silk was saying. They was just reminiscing. They war stories, you know, in this game with who they done been with yeah. and all this other shit. And I was like, damn, bro, these niggas really. 
Like they was already the ghosts to me, but to actually sit there, you know, that's just like if y'all riding around reminiscing, talking about whatever, whatever. So somebody could be around y'all and they look at y'all as these high figures. Yeah. And y'all just talking about y'all life, what y'all done did, who you done beat that's up, hard. And that's hard. how much money you done made right here and the end, and who you used to date and all this that's shit. You just, I'm just sitting back there like, wow, oh, bro. I wouldn't even want to say the names, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying I was in awe, my nigga. Like in awe, bro. Master P is the truth. Have you talked to him since then, or you never? Oh seen yeah, him? I, I talked to him a couple times after that. Yeah, That's old. a couple times. Yeah. How like, did that motivate you, though? Because being in that environment, seeing all of that, how did that push you? Man, that whole truth was just surreal. That shit just was. It that just was. I don't know. It, I ain't gonna say that it motivated me because it, it damn near discouraged me mm. when I went to this nigga house. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> God damn, my nigga, like... I got to come on with it. And you know, for a while, like, P just now getting back out there. He on social media right. heavy now. You know, for a while, P was, like, chilling. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I just remember at that time, Silk was telling him he... Silk wanted to get back in the rap. He had went to... He had did a show in Vegas, and they was showing him, like, crazy little... And I remember P just like, man, leave that shit alone, bro. They don't want to hear you. Like, so, so, he just was all the way off everything mm -hmm. that had to do with that. You know what I'm saying? And... This courage. Like, and... and to see just Pete, like, he was talking about so much business shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was really making me feel like rep. This ain't the route to go get the real bag. But at the same time, he was also telling me shit, how to get the bag and rep. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's just, it was foreign to me at that time, though. And like, he you frequent in movies, too. Ah, he, the, and he the truth. Like, I just can, that's all I can say when I think of Master P. Like, Master P the truth. Master P is like the blueprint to what I want to do in this rap game. I tell niggas all the time, like, that's the blueprint. You know what I'm saying? Like, my favorite rappers is Nas and Scarface and Jay-Z, but my favorite hustler is Master P. You oh, know what I'm saying? Oh, that's the nigga, and that nigga took care of all his people, bro. Yeah. Like, Shout out to my boy Big Court. Big Court came yeah, on my man. show. He's a friend of Master P, but one of his best friends. And yeah. he always shouting out P or either y'all, you know that. solid, bro. Everybody can't be, everybody telling the truth about P, man, being yeah. a real, we know he's a hardcore business man, a real hustler. Right. Man. Yeah, so, yeah. man, when you think about, like, the, the songs, you just did a song, like, uh, a while back with Sauce and Zero, Nim. Uh -huh. um, what was that like, Propane? Like, H-Town. Man, that's a... Uh, that remix. Yeah, so just to date it back, so Walk is like, when we talking rap, Walk is, you got rap friends, niggas be rap friends and shit. Walk is my real partner, you know what I'm saying? Like, outside of rap, that's like my real homeboy. Then Zero was my favorite Houston rapper that I used to idolize growing up. So then me and him end up getting like really, really cool, you know what I'm saying? Oh. So them, that's a song with like two of my partners, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like real partners. Walker was a nigga who came to me when nobody knew who he was, bro. He wow. was just on the come up and it, my partner brought him to my studio and I'll never forget this nigga was just telling me what he was about to do in the rap game, how he about to sauce the world up. And I remember just being like, who the fuck is this nigga and what is he talking about? He tripping. Like, he he had spilled something. He was like, man, sauce apology, bro. And I was like, this nigga really serious about this sauce shit? But wow. as he kept talking to me, I'll never forget that night. As he kept talking to me, this nigga was selling me. He was, I was like, by the end of that conversation, I was like, damn, this nigga might is fist to sauce the world up. And I'm gonna tell y'all some crazy shit. Everything that nigga told me that night, that was in 2013, 2014, some shit. Man, that nigga did every single thing he told me he was gonna do, bro. Everything, bro. He told me everybody was gonna be stealing his lingo. Everybody was, was gonna be talking about, about they that. dripping. They gonna be talking. About, he told me all this, bro. I, I, I was it's about to crazy. ask you about that because a lot of people he he always step up and say, "Man, I did this first. Man, nigga trying to steal the sauce, steal man, the drill. I came with the dude, word he first. Doing that shit first. You bro. you be looking at it and that seeing nigga it. An innovator, bro. I I watched it all happen in my face. I watched this nigga. Build all this shit in my face. They used to record out my studio. You wow. know what I'm saying? Wow. I, said, I watched it. Like, I watched this nigga. And can't nobody take nothing from him. And I, whenever I tell that story, bro, I always make it clear. Propane is not responsible for nothing that Walk did. Like, that nigga was going to pop whether or not I was taking him on the road with me, letting him open up or not. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That nigga had it. That I was sold the first time I talked to him. That That's nigga was destined to be one of the greatest niggas to do this shit. That's crazy that that... that that you was able to see and witness yeah. all that, and you were already excelling, man. That's just, that, uh, I love sure. to see you niggas. Y'all niggas love to get sure. money. I love and, it, bro. And that's, you know that's what I'm my, saying? That's my brother, bro. And one thing I can say about Walk, bro, is that nigga have always returned the gratitude, bro. 
He is not one of them niggas who he he don't mind telling you that story that I just told you. Yeah. He going to tell you on his own. He going to show saying? love. He going to show love, bro. He going to pay homage. Like, and that's, man, I got too much love for Walker. I got to get him on the show. I hadn't got a chance. I, I went back and forth a little bit with him. Um, I know it's going to happen because we're going to keep working. Yeah, we're going to make that call. You know what I'm we're saying? Gonna, this, we're going to make the call. Yeah, because because right? it's something, I, it's been so many different people. Like, man, you got to get Walker on there. You got to yeah, get Walker. Sure. Because he for the culture and you for the culture. Yeah, like, man, yeah. love. And Texas, man, I'm a Texas nigga from the through. And Texas nigga. Yeah, and that's what we I know. Texas so we like, Texas niggas. We believe in Texas shit. Like, for sure. It's serious, bro. For sure. And so just to see him and the way that he have activated this thing where everybody's getting to be a part of something that he yeah. built. It's getting yeah. bigger and bigger. Niggas yeah. is walking up, wanting to be a part of I just had Brad Wanna Kane on my show. Yeah. He just signed to the mm -hmm. MTSL, you know, just to do some stuff with him. Like, he's opening a door where he's embracing the culture, and that's yeah. what I'm about. I tell people this all the time when we're talking about walk on. Um, and some people may think it's a crazy comparison, but... What he is to Houston right now is what Screw was in the nineties, bro. I believe it. And and Screw, he bridged a lot of gaps between a lot of people, bro. You know what I'm saying? He made it possible for a lot of people, bro. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And this is something that I've I've been seeing in Walk, bro. Wow. I, and and this is crazy stuff. I tell you this around that time when 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 Walker was and going back and forth for like Drake and shit, man. I used to tell him before he did. I used to tell him like. Bro, just, it ain't, don't do it because you fix to go to a level that you're going to be able to help this whole city out, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You don't even need no powers that be trying to go against you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you too. And the crazy thing about this nigga is he did the shit and he still made it where he going to go. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's something right there that needs to be spoken on because a lot of people don't return no, from you doing gotta shit like that. Yeah, man, this nigga is, he... He got he's a whole brand. When he come out, Facts. it's just he make you, what you said earlier was so dope. You say he made you believe it. Facts. Because he was so stern and speaking it. Yeah. And it was coming from a place of pureness from his mm -hmm. heart. He meant it, bro. He and meant he it. meant it. Yeah. And then when you mean something, you speak it with all intensity, man, it vibrates the world, man. It comes to fruition. Yeah. You speak things into that's the way the world was formed in my in my belief system. Yeah. By speaking. Right. And what you say and how you Go into everything you do, you speak it before you do it. X. Everything. Yeah. A nigga gonna say it before you go do it. Well, I'm finna go to the store. My wife tell me that in a minute. I'm finna go up here. I got a little list. I, she done already thought it and spoken yeah. it. She keeps saying it and she do it. Right. That's what we do. Yeah. And that's what you were just saying that happened. And I believe you, bro. Yeah. I believe that, nigga. Like, like you, like, you work with so many different people, man. You you mentioned Rich Homie Quan a while right. ago. Um, do you, and I got to ask you this, and you don't have to answer it, but do you think things between Atlanta and Houston are going to be okay with what just happened? <clears throat> yeah, I think for the you most part. You see why part, I asked that? I because think, of the way people yeah, look at it. I think for the most part right now, you see, we live in a time right now, bro, where everything so much clickbait and so many people speak on shit mm -hmm. that are not really involved. Not even really involved. You know what I'm saying? Their opinion just so, and it, it, she just catch headlines and People run with these narratives and shit because people, so many people are robots and, yeah. you know what I'm saying, sheep. But I think for the most part, that's like if something happened in your neck of the woods. Okay. And then, but me and you, I know you because you 1,000, bro. Yeah. You a real nigga, you know yeah, what I'm saying? for sure. And you know me for what I am, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And something happened that... It don't got nothing to do with you. It don't yeah. got nothing to do with me. Yeah. But it was some people from where you from and some people where I'm from. Why would I stop fucking with you? Nah, that's real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's like, that's more flawed than anything else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you weren't the real one to begin with. If you, you know what I'm saying? I tell niggas all the time, like, you don't got to tell me shit about nobody to make me don't rock with them because the, the way they love me is the way I'm going to judge them the next time I'm Period. around them. You know Period. what I'm saying? And that's how I'm gonna keep it. So I got partners in Atlanta, I got rap homies in Atlanta, and it's a lot of rappers that, in Atlanta that got partners out here. Like, man, that's, bro, you, to, to not fuck with somebody off the strength of some shit that majority of people, even us sitting at this table, don't even really know what the fuck happened. No, I wasn't there. You know, and it ain't our business, bro. It ain't my business. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, like, that, that, that ain't. That ain't that ain't that ain't our business. So for niggas to think that Houston and Atlanta, two of the m most popping cities in the music industry in the South, you know what I'm saying? We gonna stop fucking with each other. Like, 
Who who gonna stop fucking with each other? Yeah, cause like, we you know got a lot of saying? love for I know my brother in law down there, I got to go. Right. <laughs> like I'm you know always down there. Like I don't I don't think and and not to even speak on that, I just really think niggas really don't know what the what, fuck they talking happened. about, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I don't think niggas really understand what even you know what I'm saying? Yeah, people like, just making up stuff and everybody's saying whatever, putting out narratives out there, right. man. You know, I remember when it happened, I I spoke from a place on Boss Talk, you can go listen to it. It was from my heart. It was yeah. basically just just showing the fact of, man, I can't believe this. Uh, yeah. I hate this happened. Yeah. Uh, prayers to all the families involved. That's the kind of, you know, that's the way I went with it. Because at first I wasn't going to put it out. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to put this out. But then I said, I got to put this out because they need to hear this, man. Like, yeah. it's people who care about these people, man. All right. No, and for I, sure. I hate this happening. For sure. For so sure. I got I know all these other niggas saying this and that and that. I'm not that dude, man. I yeah. love everybody. Facts. So I just want to see niggas get past this in a way to where we don't have to have no more bloodshed. Yeah. I'm being real. No, nah, I, I agree. I think. But um, I know how niggas think and I know how niggas do, but I do know there's a God that's bigger than all. Thanks. So at the end of the day, man, I just pray for the families and man, again, take off, man. Hey, RIP, man. I really enjoyed it. I met him one time and he was a solid dude. I, solid dude, you know. Man. I was in Magic in Vegas and seen him. You know, he was real humble, quiet. Uh, they were both chilling. Now I heard things after that. I, that was the time when Sean Kingston was there. I was there with him, and all this craziness went. Right. On. This was some years ago. You might not remember yeah. it. There was some crazy stuff went on that day. Right. You know. So, that, but that's just who we are, man. We black people who got a little rah rah, and we just pray that it don't get out of hand, man. You know. Yo, that's the main thing, bro. At the end of the day, I feel like um. If you're not in any circles of of anything of, of that that happened, you know what I'm saying, then you don't really know what happened. So I think it would be kind of crazy to cast judgment on yeah, anybody, yeah. you know what I'm saying, yeah. or, or anything, because it's almost like that situation. If you see two brothers, they getting into it. And, you know, shit, you decide to go take this brother's side right here. Yeah. You know, Bro, that what you gonna do when they get back cool? Like, you know what I'm saying? They not get in it. You know what I'm saying? You gotta some shit you and and, and I, I just say that to say when some don't got nothing to do with you, stay out of it. Stay out of Mind it. Mind your business. That's you know what I'm saying? That's actually like a penitentiary uh thing that people do. Yeah, man. Like a I, nigga mind their business, he gonna be all right. That's facts. something niggas and say. I don't know, bro. It's just internet shit just make people feel like they just Entitled to everybody' life you and get situation, to hear everybody's bro. Opinion, it just you know keeps coming. It keep coming. Yeah, bro. It's like I don't know. But man. the funny thing is that when you're, you know, older, and you've seen where internet started, you see where social media started, you see where it's come from from when it first started with your MySpace and all mm -hmm. of that tagged, all of that coming all the way up. And to us, it's getting worse because there's no privacy. There's people are capping so hard. Like, Thanks. I mean, and some people are believing it. Like, oh, yeah, where sure. do you think that this social media generation is going to be in the next five years? You say you have a child, right? Right. They're going to be dealing with this. Oh, they raised in it. You know what I'm saying? They damn near raised by it. So I think, I think, to answer your question, where it's going to be in the next five years, I talk to my partners about this all the time. I think it's only getting worse, bro. It's only getting worse. It's only getting worse. Like, like because you are starting to have people who they so influenced by something that's not real. You know what I'm saying? But they are doing everything in their power to get that same shit that's not real. You know what I'm saying? Which mm -hmm. is this fake instant gratification that you can get. I know people who don't got shit going on in their life, but they are cool because social media think they are successful. But social media has presented a platform where when it first started, everything was recreation. Mm -hmm. Joining with family, meeting family, whatever. Now it's become a thing where you can make money Thanks. off of all of that. So now everybody's running to social media, be like, I got to post every day. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to, even if it's not true, yeah. I got to just to have something to post. I could live the most boring life ever, but I can make you think that I'm balling every day. I'm doing this every day. Da, right. da, because right. you're going to look on it and I'm going to get paid. <laughs> yeah. Man. So, yeah. You're right. I think, I think. The best thing, if I could give any advice to anybody 
in that realm because it ain't gonna stop. So I tell people all the time, like either you either gotta you either gotta move with the times or you're gonna be the old bitter motherfucker. That's that's it. That's the only way around it. So what I tell people is you just got to understand how to separate the two. You got to under, understand how to separate reality from social media. Mm. Man, got to ask you about uh, you and J-Dog. Y'all did a song together some years ago. My back. life. My life. Yeah. Um, did you know that he had people down in uh, Frogtown and Jefferson? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. The, first, the first feature I ever got ever as a rapper was with J-Dog, my, my very first year as a rapper. So that was <laughs> like the second coming. And the crazy part is... That song is called My Life 2. Yeah. He was supposed to be on My Life 1. That's crazy. And the story why he not on there is, so I, I went to the projects to go, this was what on my Ron Slap mixtape in 2013. I went to the projects to go, uh, to to get the verse from him. He told me to pull up, so I'm pulling up me, G and B, them the producers that's on both of one and two. We pull up and uh, it's like a bunch of him and his homeboys in the, um, in the apartment. And so we in there, he listens to the song. He's like, oh, yeah, we just, we going in on this. And as he get, he writing this verse, we just, somebody come bang on the door. And then coming out, yeah, bro, man, got two with these niggas, bro. These niggas pulled two on me. Niggas like, what? It's all the niggas raised up. They talking. Then you see a car out there and a dude like, man, that's them right there. Oh, yeah, that sound like a movie. Bah, 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 bah. Sound like from a the door. From the door, they just shooting. Like, I'm just like, so one of the niggas like, man, pro, y'all make sure pro good. Pro, you go in the back room. I say, hell no, nah, nigga. <laughs> I told G, I nigga, let's go. <laughs> nigga, we in the nigga, man, straight we, crit, we, crit, we crit. burn out. We burn out, man. I, man, I love J Dog. I love J Dog. Every time I see, we laugh and talk about that shit, man. And and nobody got hurt. You know what I'm saying? That day, just to put that out there, ain't nobody get hurt. Um, that's hard but that that story and just we just never came back around to doing it so to turn around and damn near eight years later six no seven years later for us to do that and that shit be that big like that's one of my biggest songs yeah, now, yeah. bro you know what I'm saying like yeah, motherfucker sing that word for word in the crazy, club crazy man and that ain't even no club song bro you know what I'm saying so yeah, that's that's he one of my favorites too, bro. J Dog is special, bro. Y'all both got these Texas ties. That's crazy. You know, yeah. That boy be down in J Town, man. Shout yeah, out to Frog. That nigga say Frog Town, nigga. Yeah. That nigga he's Texas. J-Dog so but true, but man. the nigga, but but that same as you being from Houston, right. but going down there just because you got relatives down right. there. Right. That that that's something people don't understand. I'm out here because I got relatives out here. Right. So it's Texas is different. You got people in Dallas. I got people in Dallas, you know. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you just gotta know. Know, man, that this thing here is serious, man. The yeah. culture is so thick that it's crazy, man. So tell me about the the freestyle, man. You you had a freestyle that I was looking at. Um, I I, I, just, I can't think of the name of it. Hold on, it had Pimp C Pitch on it, though. I, oh, you know, yeah, oh, yeah, you know exactly Bro, what it Sunday is. morning, I shot that Longview. What? That's my first video I ever shot Longview. Y'all love that song, bro. Yeah. So I shot that Longview. I was out there. With one of my uh my my boys was getting married. Shout out my bro D, man. Free D. He was getting he married. Get married. And we shot the video out there, and that shit came out dope as fuck. Like, That's yeah, hard, man. man. Salute to all the homies out there, man, in 903. Yeah, so yeah. you just basically, you just be everywhere doing everything. The earth is your turf, man. Mm-hmm. I'm from Texas, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, man, don't say that, boy. I get hype, boy. So you would I'm never move out of Texas? Oh, uh, <laughs> I have moved out of Texas. I lived in I lived in L.A. for, for like a year. You didn't like it? No, nah, it was dope. I love L.A. L.A. probably my favorite City outside of my Texas cities. So why you move back? Cause it's Texas. I gotta be here. Hey, like, this, this, this who it sound like? Who it sound like? <laughs> yeah. I gotta be here, but I love it though. Yeah, but when it just as far as like on some Texas shit, yeah, I'm. I got. I done shot videos in Dallas and Fort Worth. Me and Walk shot a video. Um, we got a song called Get Out. We shot the video in in uh in Fort Worth. That's hard. Uh-huh. That's hard. Uh, like two years ago. That's mm-hmm. hard. That's hard. Where like the two. name? Who gave you the name Propane? Man, my my college teammate. Um, I used and to why? because so I know my rap name used to be Lil C. Okay. So, but only because that's some Houston shit. Like you got Lil Flip, Lil Kiki. Uh-huh. You know, Big Pokey. You either was big or little something in Houston. <laughs> my name Chris, so I was Lil C all throughout growing up and shit. So I remember just before the before the games, I used to freestyle. So you know, I would always freestyle for the teams and shit like that. And I just remember. My my teammate, which was my roommate, one day we was just every time I would rap for niggas, 
it, whether it be in high school or college, because I really didn't used to rap for niggas, they'll hear me and be like, bro, you can rap, rap. Like, you you can be a rapper, you know what I'm saying? So I remember just telling him that, and I was like, bro, we got to come up with a new name, bro, because we'll see. That little shit getting kind of old, you know what I'm saying? So I remember that day, and we just came in with like 100 names. And that nigga was like, man, you spit fire, bro. You know what? We're going to call you propane. And I was like, nah, oh, bro, you can't call me no gas, bro. That shit kind of hard. <laughs> that name kind of hard. But I, so I remember t I changed the spelling to P-R-O-P-A-I-N. And ever since then, like, I ended up doing a freestyle the next day. And... I was just bullshit and I was like, son, 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 man, it's the propane, nigga. And I never left it again. Shout out my brother Paul. He gave me that name. And ever since then, it's just I've been locked in with propane. And you know, there's a Jamaican artist by the name Propane, too. It's a rock band with it, too. I done had all type of legal situations with these niggas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all school rock band yeah. niggas try to sue me. They, I, I end up really? winning the shit. Yeah, I end How up. How you win? Because I'm bigger than them. Oh, really? really? <laughs> nah, yeah. facts. Like, my likeness, I'm, I'm serious. This, uh, so they still got the name, and I still got the, they got a hyphen in their name. So uh, it's P-R-O hyphen pain. So with that being said, like, we don't got the same name, you no, know what I'm saying? No, but the Jamaican artist, his name is Propane. For real? Yes. He dope? He dope. Maybe we got to do a song. That'd be dope. Yeah. You, you know, Rich Homie Coin, you think he, he going to come back? Uh, he trying. I think, I think he, he trying. I think, I think he already back. He trying. He, I see him I on, think, I see him campaigning. I think he, I think he already back. His album, he just dropped. First of all, he never stopped dropping dope music. You know what I'm saying? Well, what made him what made him look like he was shadow banned uh, in, in on social media and like I say shadow banned on, yeah, on yeah, music. Yeah, 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 yeah like the stopped, energy. He had stopped for a little while. Then you know he had the little riff with with, with Young Thug, Thug. Yeah, and, and I think Young Thug got heavy, heavy, heavy influence in Atlanta. Okay, so you know you know this shit clickish, and I'm I'm only speculating, bro. I don't, I don't yeah, really we don't know, know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it, it looked like a lot of people sided with Thug. You know what I'm saying at the time and. I've watched interviews with Rich Homie and he just said shit, he was tripping at the time. You know, he was on them drugs and he wasn't going as hard as what, but I can, can say for a while now, Rich Homie Quinn has been putting out some hard ass music. Like his new album, he just put out hard. The album he put out before that, hard. Like, yeah, I rock with him. You think, with, you think you'll ever work with him again? You know, y'all did that that's, one. That's my boy. I still talk to him. So y'all, yeah. you think you rock out with him one yeah. more time? I wonder, yeah. I'd like to hear another one from y'all. Yeah, for sure. I fuck with him. Let's talk about the big elephant in the room for me, you know. Uh, Hot Boy West. Because I asked you about how you found right. out about Boss Talk 101. See, that's the elephant mm. in the room. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, you said, what did you say? You know, I got to let, what, yeah. how did you say let it? Let you say Off it. the record. Yeah. That, uh, the interview, I watched the interview with Hobo West. That's hard. And yeah. you didn't, that was your first time seeing Boss Talk? Or yeah, did? yeah, that was my first time. Well, I had I had seen clips, so I knew about Boss Talk. I had that's already hard. knew about it, that's so I, I was already on to it. But th that was one of the ones I sat and I watched it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I got ADHD, so it's damn near hard for me to sit <laughs> I and watch. Know, right? it. I know, right? You know what I'm saying? But I watched that whole shit, and, and that shit turned me on to him. So, because you never, you never seen him before that? I had seen him, I had knew who he was. But I hadn't heard, heard like really okay. no it's music. Like Ray you know one said y'all gave him a character. Y'all made it to where people mm. knew who how he was. Yeah. So after that, I, I went and checked out his music. I was like, damn, this nigga hard. Like I was already gonna fuck with him just off the interview. The interview yeah, was live. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? The nigga was honest. Like a, I like a, the rawness a, of it. authentic nigga. So I was like, damn, I'm a like even if he was trash, I probably would have still kind of fucked with it because of that interview. And I was like. That nigga solid, you know what I'm saying? So when I heard the music, I was like, damn, this nigga can go. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've been a fan ever since. Man, he when I had him on there, he showed love, he showed love to uh Kiki Power, I, that's what, that nigga that's that what showed made love, me, bro. That's what made me go fuck with him. That nigga was paying homage. And he was and he and he know about it to be a younger nigga. <laughs> he know about he, it, bro. He, that's he the shit studying that, it. That's what that's what Bought me in, bro. I swear to God, that what you just said. That right there. When I heard that nigga saying it, and he a Texas nigga, and he uh, uh he proud of this culture. You That's know what it. I'm saying? That's it. So when I heard that shit, I was like, oh, now I'm rocking with this nigga. Yeah, raw, just raw. And he come in. What you see is what you get. He yeah. ain't trying to. Hide. It remind me of if I had a got to talk to a Tupac the way he mm -hmm. just let it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the time that I'm talking about that Tupac that was just. Throw that out there. He wasn't trying to hear it. Yeah, you know, nah, that's the it. way he yeah. was. You know, and you got to realize this man, 20, he ought to be 28 now when I call you like Unc, but the 11 years in prison already. Yeah. Or 11 years, you know, in TD, yeah. just trying yeah. to get back, fighting back in life, coming back up, and then to get an opportunity to be work with Gucci and them. I thought that was dope. So I went looking for him. She knew it. I wanted to be a part of his, his whole run and the way yeah. he carried himself. 
That was dope. So yeah, that's I, what I that was about. That definitely turned me on all the way to Boss Talk. It didn't turn me on. And I'm looking for Sauce Walker next. I mean, he already, We're going to make that happen. Yeah, he already, you know, doing his thing, but Boss Talk got to get him in the room. You feel me? <laughs> man, so, um, man, thank you, man. So how can people... How can people get a hold of you? Man, Propane713. That's on everything. That's on Twitter, Instagram. That's Facebook. That's YouTube. P-R-O-P-A-I-N-713. That's hard. Yeah. Top three artists of all time. You heard when we said it earlier. <laughs> Did all Top three artists. Alive, so that's some all genre. Uh, all genre. Michael Jackson. Okay. No, well, Michael two. always killing of me, course. Boy. They Number want me two. to retire. Um. Damn, three? Yes. Michael Jackson. Damn, man. Come on, it ain't that Nas, hard now. Nas. It ain't that hard. Nas. 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 Yeah, you said Nas. Nas. Yeah, yeah. Michael Jackson, Nas. Number three? That's usually where everybody uh, choke up is a number three. I'm going to go with... I got a couple options, so it's out of... This is my personal favorite. So it's out of Mary J. Blige. No, it's not an out of. I'm, I'm just a pick it though. I'm okay. a pick it though. Okay, I'm just a pick it. It. It's out of Mary J. Blige. It's out of Stevie Wonder. That's hard. Um, Who are you going with? Damn. I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with. Yeah, tick tock. Tick tock. Tupac. That's a safe Tupac. choice for real. Yeah. For real. I'm go with Tupac. I'm so do you feel Tupac. that Tupac is better than Prince? So I'm just saying. He not a I'm Prince the wrong fan person like to ask that question. Oh, nigga, yeah. That nigga in the street. I come he from from someone earlier nah, said nah, that. Nah, nah you're a rapper, that, rapper nigga, man. I, I, but but I'm gonna tell you why. This is the only thing. So I'm just a, I study everything. So I study everything about Prince and I know he's like one of those unicorns. Like you got him, you got Rick James, you got uh, R. Kelly, you got D'Angelo. And what I mean by unicorn is they are like a select few of artists that do everything. They write everything, they mix everything, they play every instrument. They, every, it's, it ain't too many. We can't name 10 artists that's really cold they got the influence that like R. Kelly, a Prince, a Rick James, mm -hmm. D'Angelo, like they are like unicorns, Ryan Leslie, them type. So I got nothing but respect for Prince, but I come from a household where it was a Prince versus Michael Jackson. So I don't, uh, And Michael Jackson went Yeah, Michael time. Jackson the GOAT. Got it. Wow. So I, I'm not gonna pick too, Prince over too many people. Got you. Being that you down here in Texas, man, what you think about UGK? I got to talk about Bum B and PMC, man. What you mean? What I think? But about how, UGK? what you think about that group? How, how are they? How, do you even listen to UGK? Come on, are you a UGK <laughs> fan? What are you talking I'm about? I'm from bro? Texas, man. How can be from Houston? This is, Houston, is, I, I, I this is propane. That, that, that's a, that's a, this is propane. Uh, Port Arthur, do you still, know what? Port Arthur is still know? Houston. I got, the name I got of my two, company, I got bro. two more. I got this two more questions. Forever Trill, bro. Like I'm influenced. Why UGK, bro? Bum B is my dog. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but hold on, but they weren't in your top three. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here you told, we you go. asked me the top three orders of all time. Yeah, a lot of people put, especially when you're from Texas, a lot of people put Pim C, UGK in their top three. Scarface, they put that in their top you three. Didn't, you, you didn't say top five. And, no, 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 top and, three. And I'm going to tell you right now, I love Bum B. I love UGK. I love Scarface. But I also really love Michael Jackson, <laughs> and I really love Tupac. Tupac is the only rapper in the world that has ever made me cry. Ever. I have never cried to no other nigga music. Dear mama got that nigga. We gonna make it at his mama. Dear mama got that nigga. Dear mama. Thugs Mansion. Thugs Mansion. Thugs Mansion. Thugs Mansion. Thugs Mansion. Thugs Mansion. When I, you know I told you when I moved to Longview? Yeah. yeah. So I told my mama I would, but... I was just bullshitting. Like, I ain't want to leave my partners. Mm -hmm. So when she had already it, took me out of school and put me in, I was like fucking heartbroken. I would cry all the way down there, man. I ain't crying so long and you were before listening that. To Tupac. Man, I would listen to Tupac on repeat the whole way down there. Like, <laughs> fuck the world. Fuck this shit. I hate it, bro. Like, I was devastated, dog. That's hard. Devastated, that's bro. That's hard, though. Yeah, like. That's, but, that's, that, but that's real. Nah, for sure. That's who we are. See, if you would have asked me the top three groups all the time, no. that would have been different. You know what I'm saying? I would have hit you with the UGK, Outkast, 
Possibly. No, top three artists. A lot of people throw Jackson UGK Power. or Pimp C in it, though, or Scarface. In their top three? Yeah. A lot of I people, can see when, that. They, when they text us, they throw See, but you, you said all genres, and I'm like a music junkie. Mm. Like, we can go back to the 50s, the, the, the 60s. I'm a... I'm a music junkie. I listen to everything. So I I I, I don't know. I just we got some it's kinda hard to put people over Michael Jackson and I agree. I agree. Stevie Wonder. I agree. I can't wait to the next movie. Y'all got me. I'm I, I was sure. excited. Like I said again, I want to go back to that. I just want to tell you thank you for even, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Appreciate uh, y'all. Uh, putting man. that time in and, and, and doing y'all. what you do, man. Like I said, I can't wait for the next one. I yeah. got to see the next one, man. It for got sure. to, it gotta come on, man. It it's, gotta, it's, you know what I'm saying? We start shooting in you a couple got, months. Yeah, but then I gotta see you. You gotta be I need you everywhere doing everything. I need yeah. you in different cities. Facts. I need to see you. I need nah, to see Kevin sure. Hart beside you. Be in all the movies you know, other than all, that. All, you got Bubba Dub down here. He, yeah. he, that's who you need to link with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, that's I, my I boy. He was here to, yesterday. I ran into him outside of the studio and I uh You need to link with him. Tell him you from East Texas. So he I from East Texas. Texas yeah, so. so when I ran into him, um yeah, he from like what, like Lufkin or something I, I, like that? By, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so yeah, um ran into him. I just knew him from social media. I didn't even know, you know, what he was doing down there like that. I was like, bro, you funny as hell. I fuck. And the nigga was like, knew my music. Yeah, that fuck nigga real. Up. I didn't know he was from Texas, though. You know what, what I'm saying? Yeah, I ain't know that. So, when he got the, he just, he, I was like, damn, nigga, where you from? You know a lot about propane. You know what I'm saying? And when he told me that, I was like, damn, that's crazy. But yeah, he he funny as fuck. Him and Jeff Shelley, some of my favorite uh, 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 Comedians online, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Niggas yeah. on the come up, and I, I think they're gonna do big His stand-up things. His stand up is hilarious. Hilarious. Too, so you, yeah, you gotta go see it. You gotta go see it. And 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 like I said, the movie thing, he he mm-hmm. he, he dipping and dab. You need to y'all okay. I'm gonna link nah, y'all I'm, in. I'm I'm definitely that's the that's the route I'm I'm definitely looking to go, bro. I'm really I'm really interested. And, and doing more movies, man. Yeah. That shit was dope. I'm just trying to put you with the new ones coming that it's yeah, going to be. Yeah, yeah. It's going to you know, pop off. Me and him, man, gotta, we fuck around and do a uh, Friday. It'll be hard. Shit, It'll know be know hard, saying? nigga. Yeah. It'll be hard. So, but do you, you know, I'm going I'm to I'm let you out of here, but the videos, man, uh, do you get real cinematic? Because now you you doing movies, nigga. I expect more in your video. Don't yeah. come out here with no but, freestyle with the mic hanging. I don't want to nah, see that. I'm I'm been, yo, you you got to go watch some propane. No, I want to see a, nigga, I wanna see a, a miniature movie, nigga. Up, did you see? Did y'all see the video with me and J-Dog? That shit is that a classic. Is we re- reenacted my whole damn childhood, his childhood. That shit is a movie. So I've always been it. on that. I've always been on... I Every videographer I work with, I tell them all the time, hey, bro, I'm not one of them niggas who want to stand in front of you with my partners behind me and rap. Mm-hmm. Like, we need to give them something to come back and watch again and again and again. You know what I'm saying? I feel a lot... I always say that a lot more people need to do that. For sure. Paint the picture because, yes, they can hear what you're saying, but when they can see it, they feel it a lot more. It, it, that's but what takes the song to do. another level. But I, I've always knew that from the jump, so that's something I always do. Always do. That's crazy, man. So, man, hey, man, we love you, Propane, man. man Thank you for doing y'all. Boss Talk 101. I ask you to just continue to pray for me and my wife for and my sure. family, man. I for know. Sure. And I'm going to do the same for you and your daughter, man. That's Appreciate what it, it, bro. real talk and real conversations is what we're about. Well, I don't know nothing about how to do this like no other nigga and you cut him off. Yeah, nigga, I'm going to yeah. talk crazy. Yeah. All that. Thanks. Because I'm just a country Texas nigga and I'm yeah. proud of it. Nigga. And I got to so, say, stand up for you for being, you know, a single dad, handling your business, taking care it. of Thank your you. baby and stuff like Thank that. You. Thank you. We didn't get into the reason why you're a single oh, dad. Oh, hey, there she go. <laughs> you know, that's a woman. Yeah. Because it's rare. You don't ever hear it. You always hear it because... People sitting in a seat is always raised by their mom right. and their dad is a Rolling Stone or in prison or, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. We're you watching know, them Tyler Perry movies. It's not watching them. <laughs> I'm <laughs> talking about the people who sit, the guests who sit in this seat. Right. It's majority of people. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, when I didn't I even hear, know my daddy. See? So yeah. at all? At all. So you, even to today, you don't know him? Nah, I think I, I met him one time when I was like three. Three. Yeah, so my daddy African, he's from Ghana. Okay. But yeah, we I have no relationship with him. I don't know if he walked in here right now, I wouldn't know. Him. Wow. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. How did that make you feel? I don't know. You just kind of like hard to miss something you ain't never had. So I don't I don't know. And so where, that, I, where I'm from, that was coming. Mm-hmm. Nobody See? got their daddy. We don't we I don't so you. it's like, you know what I'm saying? So, so has so, that yeah. made you step up to the plate even more with your child? I, maybe, but shit, I enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I couldn't even fathom me not. Being around my daughter or not raising my daughter, you know what I'm saying? So I don't that part right there I don't get with with other niggas who like not, not involved in their kids' life. And I'm you know I 
as you get grown, you understand circumstances for different people is different shit. And sometimes it ain't these people fault or whatever. So I, I get that part. But just to not have no relationship at all, you know what I'm saying? That's but, that's weird to me. But how hard is it for you being a man raising a little girl compared to, you know, it's easier for you to raise a little boy because, yeah, right. you can relate. But then raise a little girl, how hard is that? Mm. Or um, how uncomfortable is it? It's not uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? It's not uncomfortable. And I don't want to sit here and make it seem like her mama is not involved at all because her mama is involved. And okay. I, I think... It's done got me and her relationship done got a little bit better now. So now it's kind of like she'll go with both of us type shit. But okay. like when I was seeing last year, that was 100 percent. Okay. 100 percent So um, but to just answer your question, like it's it's I ain't gonna say it's hard, shit is life. You know what I'm saying? I'm a winner. So I feel like anything that I do in life, I'm out to do it at the highest level and do it the best. So if you ask me how would I grade my father's skills, I'm gonna tell you an A plus. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, I don't want to settle for nothing less. That's just like we're rapping. If you ask me how good I think I rap, I'm not being cocky in one of these dudes who like, oh, I'm cold. I think, nah, I really think I'm that one. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I, like, that's just, I'm gonna put my all in that shit. So I really believe that. You know what I'm saying? So that's just, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's difficult. I think it's just something that I want to do. I think I enjoy it. I think as she get older, it's, it's constantly a new experience every single day she older. So, her at eight years old, that's a whole different girl that was at seven mm -hmm. and at five. So this shit exciting and it's new. Now we getting the beef because I can't comb hair. So, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I try to do it in the morning and she's like, this ain't it. You know what I'm saying? So it's just dope, man. She building this personality now. She want to be fly. And, you know, you just watch them from a baby. Now mm -hmm. you seeing these people have minds of their own. Personalities. And they, personalities. And Opinions. And Opinions and now she kind of can get mad and be quiet now. It's just, so even though it's life and you know you're growing, this shit is still like, wow. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking every day like, damn, this is crazy. You want more? I don't want no more girls. <laughs> nah, I don't want no more girls. That shit ain't for the week. A girl ain't for the week, especially for somebody who like me, like who I want everybody around me to enjoy themselves. I want everybody to be happy. You got to be protective of that girl. You can't. Oh yeah, for sure. I need to, I, I, I got to go back one time into the music, and I, and I hate to do you like this, but you talked about your label a while ago. Right. How important is it to you, or do you <clears throat> to have you signing a deal, or, or is it independency, or what, what mm -hmm. was the route for you, man? All right, great question. So, boom, I got, I've, I've had deals, I've had offers that I felt like could have been dope and didn't take them. You know what I'm saying? So when two rounds came out, that was in 2013, 2014, and had offers from Atlantic, had offers from Dev Jam, sat on Leo Cohen's couch, talked to Mike Karam, went out there in Atlanta. Atlanta. Atlantic told me they want to put me with MMG. <clears throat> I ain't want to do it because, hell, Rick Ross ain't handpicked me, so y'all going to throw me over there. It, that's the time they had Meek and they had Wale, and I'm like, that's because I got a hot song. It ain't like these niggas oh, this nigga right here the hardest, we want him. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, nah, I don't want to do that to myself because that is not going to be authentic. And then they also told me they was going to put me with CTE. Wow. And I was just like the same shit. Like, nah, that ain't. And, and I ain't saying I made the, the perfect decision at the time, but that's just, I always been the type of nigga who wanted to take my own destiny in my own hands. I told you, I always wanted to be like Master P. So I always wanted to try to own as much as I could. So I just, I, I wouldn't just that, that, ready to rush to go get up under some niggas who didn't even pick me. So I ain't take the Atlantic shit. I ain't take the Devil Jam shit. I ended up doing a 50-50 partnership with um, E1 at the time. That was just for the single deal. These niggas offered me 10 times more money than everybody was trying to offer me. You know what I'm saying? I was, able to, I was able to get my, the ownership to that song back. You know what I'm saying? Which that bitch still stream crazy to this day. You know what I'm saying? So, and then just to build on the catalog, on the catalog, on the catalog. So at this point now, I'm in my 11 year now, now this shit all makes sense. Mm -hmm. As opposed to what I didn't take. And I know niggas not to speak on them. I know rappers who at the time was taking deals and they was bigger than me and shit now. And now it's like, you don't own none of that shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's real. Mm -hmm. You don't own none of it. So these niggas damn near don't even care for rap no more. Cause the game will do that to you, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, Opposed yeah. to now, I got everything that I've ever did since I first came in. And so every time you make a move, like how I just did this movie, it's supposed to be a bunch of niggas who just now fits to find out who propane is. What's the first thing you're gonna do? 
Go look at that music. You or feel me? Try to look so every up. time this shit keeps streaming and go up, and every time I have a moment like the Zay Dog song or or the song I got with Kevin Gates or some shit, me or whoever, whatever, it just keep going up, keep going up, and I own this whole catalog. So now at this point right now, it makes so much damn sense of what everything I was doing. You know what I'm saying? Because it's every month. You know what I'm saying? I get everything every month. So and I'm not saying that every nigga. Sh- you need to do this same route. This is just what I want to do. Some niggas get into the game because they want to be famous or they want to be on the biggest stages. So I'm not saying there's no right way or wrong way, but what I am saying is propane. If it don't make sense and me to maintain ownership and when it's all said and done, my daughter had this shit when I'm done. Mm-hmm. Opposed to a lot of these artists we seen when they pass away and their kids ain't taken care of because they don't own none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That ain't gonna be me. You know what I'm saying? All right, my, my daughter already got two albums in her name right now. Wow. I already That's gave good. her two. I got an album called Seven. When she turned seven, we signed up bitch over to her. So she collects all the streaming money for that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When she turned 21, she gonna probably have four, five albums that I done made that I'm just gonna get to her though. So that's the way, you know, I don't, I don't have to. All right, let me go put this up every month for my daughter. She, she already collecting it on her own without me even thinking about that's it. You know what I'm saying? So that's the move. Um, that's so, just what I want to do, bro. So you know what I'm saying? What's your affiliate? I don't know if y'all went over it whenever no, I, I didn't. Um, with, with, okay, uh, so, King Noah. Yeah, so what is your affiliation with um no. with seven seven? That's um, that's my bro. That's my bro. That's like my real, that's my friend. You know what I'm saying? And when we first met, um, we had dip and dab in trying to just, you know, trying to put something together, something music, together. You know what I'm saying? And I think I ended up finding out this nigga is way much more vital to me as a partner. That's real. Way more than music, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Way more than music. And I, I think um, that's somebody we got mutual respect for each other. That's somebody who at, at, at a time where I still was, I mean, at the end of the day, we all trying to figure this shit out, you know what I'm saying? But I still was just trying to figure out which way I wanted to go as an artist. And he was somebody that was trying to figure out which way he wanted to just get in the game, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think we we kind of clicked, but as far as musically, it we don't, we haven't never put any music out together, but we have put out a bunch of music together, like with his yeah, artists, yeah, with like his I fuck yeah, with his yeah, artists. Yeah, 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 like right. that's, yeah, that's my nigga. Like, and, and me and him kind of got, uh, a common thing, bro. He a winner also. That nigga gonna win oh. it by any means. And that's what me and him click. And even with the movie and shit, like, like he done presented so many opportunities. So nigga, like I'm forever grateful to everything he got going on, everything he done did. But that's like, that's more than some rap shit. You know what I'm saying? That's like my nigga. It's yeah, family. Yeah, yeah, for sure, Same for sure. way I feel about it, man. A great dude. I've been solid ever since I met him. Yeah. And that's the cold part. That's another thing about energy and understanding. Yeah, he different, deal. bro. Yeah, move with He different. And he we different. We're going to have them godly conversations, too. And they're grown different. man conversations. Grown man conversations. So that, that's, that's yeah, he, you, he, got, you got You got family. And then the seven, when you brought the seven up, the seven-year-old daughter. Yeah. That's what made her think. Yeah, 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 for sure. And so that's the album that... Made him gravitate to me. I know. That seven stood out to him. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I didn't even really fully, fully understand numerology and the numbers and everything. And when we had a conversation, he put me on, you know how big this album is? You know what this seven is? And what's crazy is that was the meaning behind the album. Yeah. And I didn't even know you it. You didn't even know it. You feel me? <laughs> that's hard. That's if you God. go listen to the skits on there, that's what that album was really about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so he put me, he, man, it's just, and, and just what you said, bro, them conversations we had, them conversations we had, and, and what it did to elevate my intellect to a lot of other shit was way more important than anything, anything. we could ever do mm-hmm. music. Yeah, that's you know real. what I'm saying? That's real. Yeah. Um, you said you did one with Kevin Gates. This is it. This is the last question. <laughs> <laughs> you, you did one with Kevin. How was it working with Kevin Gates? And would you would you be working with him again? Man, I got actually a couple songs with Kevin Gates. The first song I got with Kevin Gates, I didn't even ask him to do it. Wow. That was the song with Rich Homie Quinn. Yeah. He did the remix. That's when he was just on his shit and just wanted to get on shit and was killing shit. And he did that. And then the second one, this is around the time that Atlantic was trying to sign me. He had just kind of, he was just signing with them and just doing his thing. And I remember... There was a dude named Brian that was working with him that was trying to just pretty much sell him into Texas marketing and was just, you know what I'm saying? Getting him on different shit with different shit like that. And salute to Gage, bro. I think Gage one of the one of the hardest, the hardest artists. I ain't even gonna just say rappers because he's bigger than a rapper. He one of the hardest artists the game done seen. I think he kind of underappreciated for how cold he is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, at the end of the day, what's meant for you 
Ain't nobody can take it from you. Man, so you whatever's like coming to him, you sound like it's coming me, to him full fledged straight ahead. You, you feel me? That's what they, you know, that's that's like my Monica in, in Texas. And every, everywhere I go, man, bro, you so underrated, bro. You you supposed to be, and I tell niggas all the time, bro, like, nah, I'm rated where I'm supposed to be rated, bro. This is how this story supposed to go. Yeah, and, and I'm cool with it. Whenever it get to wherever it is you think that I'm supposed to be, I'm going to be there when I'm supposed to be there. I say this all the time, bro. And, but, it, but it's 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 humbling, though, bro, because you have a nigga sit here, and this all the time I had these interviews, and they be like, bro, man, I think you supposed to be where he says to that. Y'all like this, and I'll be like, nah, he where he supposed to be at. Yeah. It's them been people who was right here, and I was right here. And I just kept doing this right here, though. Why I, I just seen niggas do that, and I just kept doing this. And I just seen niggas do this, and I'm just keep doing this. Yeah, I'm not. I'm never gonna stop doing this, bro. That's real. This shit ain't. I ain't no time limit on this. I'm timeless with the rap shit, like I because know. I rap in my life. So this ain't no trend. This shit, I'm gonna be here in two more years. The race. Facts. Yeah, I can't wait to get you to Dallas. So I know you coming down there. Oh man. yeah, for sure. We gonna make it. Come through the, by the shop, man. We are gonna get it popping yeah. again, man. So as soon as you can, let me know when you coming in. Got to. Town, man, you gotta got to. come by Boss Talk in, in the D. Hey, man, thank you so much for coming on Boss Talk 101, man. You're a great guy. We love you. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out.